and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very common and interesting topic, and that is chicken pox. So let's get started. So what is chicken pox? Chicken pox is a very contagious infection, which is caused by the varicella zoster virus. The infection mainly affects kids, but adults can get it too. The telltale sign of chicken pox is a super itchy skin rash with red blisters, which are found sporadically all around the body. The rash usually starts on the chest, back and face, and then spreads to the rest of the body. Over the course of several days, the blisters will begin to pop and start to leak, and then they will crust and scab over before finally healing. So from this definition of chicken pox, we get that it's a viral infection, which is very common in kids, but adults can get it too, and it's caused by this specific virus called the varicella zoster virus. So the telltale sign of this infection, or the most prominent symptom of this infection, is the super itchy skin rash which develops over these patients' entire bodies. So this rash actually begins firstly as a red spot, and this is called a papule. And then over a few days, they actually become filled with fluid, and we then call it a vesicle. And then over another few days, as time passes, they will actually crust and scab, and these blisters will actually begin to pop and leak out the vesicle fluid. And this is actually super uncomfortable and super itchy for these patients. And as we can imagine, it actually makes the children very uneasy and uncomfortable and irritable. And it's so sad to see these little ones go through all of this. So now that we know what the basics of chicken pox is, let's take a closer look at how one can contract this disease. So chicken pox is very highly contagious. It is easily passed between non-immune family members and school classmates through airborne particles, droplets in exhaled air, and fluid from the blisters or the sores. It can also be transmitted indirectly by direct contact with articles of clothing or other items exposed to fresh fluid from open sores. So children under the age of two are most at risk for chickenpox, and in fact 90% of all cases occur in young children but older kids and adults can get it too. So as this little speech bubble says, the disease actually spreads pretty quickly and it spreads very easily. It can actually be spread through airborne particles which are exhaled in the air or coughed up or sneezed up. And it can also be spread from the fluid or the oozing of these little blisters. And if another child comes into contact or even an adult in the house, comes into contact either with these airborne particles or even in direct contact with this fluid from these blisters, they can actually contract the disease quite easily. So the best way to actually prevent the spread of this virus is to get the varicella vaccine. So children who have never had chicken pox should get two doses of the vaccine. The first is taken at 12 to 15 months of age and the second between ages 4 and 6. And children over the age of 13 who have never been vaccinated before should get two doses of the vaccine at least 28 days apart. So the wonderful thing about this disease is that we can actually prevent it and build up some immunity if we get vaccinated. So that's why it's so essential to vaccinate our kids with the varicella vaccine so the onset of such diseases can actually be prevented. So now that we know how one can contract this disease, let's take a closer look at some signs and symptoms of this disease. So as we mentioned in the first slide, the itchy rash is the most prominent symptom caused by the chickenpox infection, and it appears 10 to 21 days after the initial exposure to the virus, and usually lasts for about 5 to 10 days. So it takes about 10 to 21 days for the patient to actually develop the rash, after their initial exposure to either those airborne droplets or direct contact from those oozing vesicle fluid in order for them to develop the rash. So once the rash actually appears on the patient, it takes about 5 to 10 days for it to run its course and then after that it actually begins to disappear. So some other signs and symptoms which may appear 1 to 2 days before the rash include a fever, a loss of appetite, headache, and tiredness and a general feeling of being unwell, which is malaise. So once the chicken pox rash appears, it goes through three phases. So before these three phases begin, it actually begins as a tiny macule, which is just a red spot which appears on the skin. And then we reach stage one, which is a raised pink or red bump, which is called a papule, which break out after several days. 
So this is actually what the papular stage looks like. So from the macule, these red spots, we move to a papule stage, which are these raised red spots. So from the papule stage, we move to small fluid-filled blisters, which are called vesicles, and this form in about one day and then break open and leak. So this is what the chickenpox vesicles look like. And then we have the crusting and scab stage, which cover over the broken blisters and take several more days to heal. So then we have the crusting and scabbing stage, which are the final stages of this rash. The diagnosis of chickenpox. So the diagnosis of chickenpox is primarily based on the signs and symptoms with typical symptoms of the characteristic rash. So confirmation of the diagnosis may be done by the examination of fluid within the vesicles of the rash or by testing the blood for evidence of an acute immunological response, which includes testing for IgMs and IgGs. So basically, in order to diagnose this disease, we look for the characteristic rash of the patient. We can also do a viral culture, and this means taking swabs from the fluid from these vesicles and then sending them for laboratory testing or we can also do a blood test to actually specifically look for antibodies against the varicella zoster virus. So the IgMs will actually speak of a current infection and the IgGs will speak of a past infection in these patients. And these are all the methods we can use to diagnose chickenpox. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of chickenpox. So there is no specific treatment for chickenpox, but there are pharmacy remedies that can alleviate some symptoms. So these include paracetamol to relieve the fever and calamine lotion and cooling gels to ease the itching. So in most children, the blisters crust up and fall off naturally within one to two weeks. So there is no actual specific treatment for the disease, but we can treat symptomatically. So we'll treat the fever with an antipyretic drug and we can use calamine lotions or antihistaminic gels to ease the patient's intense itching sensations and to decrease the anxiety. And that brings us to the end of this video on chicken pox. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.